Welcome back, Stasis 23 here, back again with some knife therapy. And before I get started, if you like this video, please drop a thumbs up on it. It helps out the channel a whole bunch. If not, thumbs down also works. And if you like knife content, and I think you do, smash that subscribe button with the bell notification so you don't miss any of the content. Alrighty, I have a, a, another weed knife for y'all. This is the Upshot, coming in at $209.50. This is another limited edition piece coming from we and their in-house designs. The uh, the first one this year was the, the Fornix model. Um, it's this one right here. <clears throat> and a lot of people seem to be enjoying their new innovative designs. Like, not really innovative, but just new fresh designs. They used to be very techno-y, futuristic looking. And I think they kind of tone it down a little bit. Uh, these are numbered pieces. Uh, this is number 71 of 410, and I'm guessing they did 410 of this variation and 410 of the blacked out variation. I'm not certain, but that's just my guess. <clears throat> um, they are still available for, uh, as of the time I'm filming this video. And let's get some specs out of the way real quick so you can have an idea of the size of the knife. You have a total length of 7.91 inches, so it's gonna be that medium to large size. EDC blade. You have a blade length of 3.47 inches, so nice, nice size. Um, you have a grip area from here to here of three and three quarters, or if you're able to choke up, you have a grip area of four and three quarters. Um, your handle thickness from here to here is 0.45 inches, so it's nice and thin thinner than your average uh, half an inch. <clears throat> your thick, I mean, your width from here to here is 1.11 inches, also pretty slender. And your blade stock thickness is coming in at 0.13 inches. And the behind the edge thickness on my particular one is around 13 thousandths. But that said, mine, the, the sharpening angle varies pretty bad on the, on the, uh, on this side is 28 degrees. And on this side, it is 22 degrees. I measure that with a, um, goniometer. If y'all want to know more about that, y'all just let me know. So before we, uh, talk any more about the upshot, let's break off into some cutting footage and then we'll get back to my final conclusions. He knows how to sharpen a knife. This thing sliced amazingly. Still screaming sharp. All right, we're gonna attempt to cut this twisted sisal rope, 3 8 inch. And then I'm gonna cut it till I run out of rope. All right, it sliced just fine. Um, I'm starting to get a blister. That's not from this knife. Uh, but my hand was getting tired, so I wasn't making the best cuts. I didn't want the knife to look terrible because I've been doing too many of these. Still nice and sharp. All right, we're going to test the ergos on this Pine 2x4 and plus see how that edge is still biting. All righty, uh, I think it did just fine. The thin nature of the scales uh, make it want to twist when you when you holding it in the hammer grip like that. But in the saber grip, it was just fine. Uh, it's still slicing well. Uh, I did notice 
<laughs> that the back, this back corner right there was catching my hand, but I, I just adjusted the grip a little bit to get out of the way. So other than that, it was good. All right, we're gonna slice up some different thickness material. We got some very thick and dense, uh, like a, almost like a plastic. And we got a three eighths uh, industrial bungee and some very dense uh, water tubing and some uh, saddle leather. All right, this thing slices great. Um, you got that thin blade stock or somewhat thin, thin grind. You have a dainty tip, so you definitely wanna watch out. But I almost snapped it off just now, cutting this stuff up. Still nice and sharp. All righty, I hope y'all enjoyed that cutting footage. <clears throat> Let's take a closer look at this. You have a drop point blade with what they call a polished bead blast finish. Um, and as you can see, it didn't take any uh, terrible smudges or scratches from any of the stuff I did just now. Um, you have a high flat grind, uh, 20 CV blade steel. So it's uh, one of your super steels. Got a nice top swedge and a pretty thin dainty tip right there. So you definitely not gonna wanna do any prying. I thought I had snapped off that tip whenever I was cutting through that uh, hard rubber hose, that the thickest one. Uh, you have fine cut jimping up there that is placed just right. My thumb lands on it perfectly if as long as you're not uh, choked forward. But right here, it's uh, grippy enough to where it'll, it'll catch onto your thumb, but it's not going to tear it up. Uh, on this side, you can see the the 71 to 410, so it's numbered right there, and then your blade steel in T90 letters, I love that. So everything else is kept sterile, and from the naked eye, it looks sterile completely. Um, you do have a forward finger choil or a very big uh, sharpening choil. I can fit a finger there, but if you have fat sausage fingers, you might wanna be careful. Still, you're gonna be wanna be careful regardless. Uh, let's close it up. The action on the knife is snappy and you give it a few shakes and it'll go down. You have jimping on the flipper tab all the way around, that fine cut jimping. It's not too sharp, uh, sharp enough to grab the finger though. You can do light switch or you can put it on top of that little hump and do a push button. They both come out about the same. Running on ceramic bearings, ceramic detent. Close it up. You have... Uh, a bronze titanium pivot collar. That's a nice little added touch. You have titanium hardware throughout. You got the Wii logo here on the pivot. Flush countersunk, countersunk uh, body screws. T8s there, T8 throughout except for the pocket clip. You have two hourglass standoffs that are bronze, tit they're titanium anodized bronze and a lanyard post that is also titanium that's anodized bronze. Nice to see all the titanium parts. You have a bronze side here on the pivot with a T8 that basically has a collar around the T8 uh, or a countersink sink. You have a hardened steel insert right here. All the hardware has been blackened and countersunk. You have a deep carry pocket clip that sits left or right hand tip up only. And let's check it out in the pocket. The clip functions great. It goes in the pocket nicely and pretty much disappears. They did add some texture to the clip. If you didn't see that in the unboxing, it's almost like a cracked ice or just some random texture. It does give you a little bit of texture on there. 
and then like a splash anodize on, on it. Uh, your centering is dead centered. Don't expect anything less from we. Um, you have no internal milling, probably trying to save on the cost. Same with the pocket clip. Uh, you got somewhat of a decorative style lock relief right here cut out. You have two nice chamfers cut out to get to the lock bar plus the lock side sits just ever so proud of the show side scale. So it's very easy to get to that lock and to disengage it. The lock is sitting at, I'd say around 40 to 50%. Very solid lock up, no play up or down, left or right whatsoever. Ergos, for being, you know, as thin natured as the handle is uh, in all dimensions, I think the ergos were good, especially in this grip right here. And also for me, the choke up grip was nice, especially when I was doing the cardboard cutting, so I didn't get hung up in that area. Um, I always like when the handle starts having that downward slope right here, tends to conform to the hand better. And even though these are flat scales, they got a nice chamfer going around that kind of keeps it soft in the hand. But the thin nature also, uh, whenever I was doing more pressure cuts, if, if I wasn't, you know, putting my thumb up here to, to keep it stable, kind of felt like it was going to be turning in the hand just a little bit. Not, not bad. Uh, Let's get some size comparisons real quick. You got it with the Fornix. <clears throat> the Fornix is a little bit longer. And we got the uh, Civivi. Doggone it, I can't think of the dang name. But one that I like a lot. It's just a hair longer. I'll try to put the name if I remember. And two more. You got the Hogue Ritter large, I mean regular size RSK. It's just a hair longer. And then you got the mini RSK by Hogue and Doug Ritter. So there you go. Like it's, it's much closer in length to the, the large size RSK. So <clears throat> my nitpicks, complaints. Um... I'm not the biggest fan of B Blast, even however, even though they do a good job, they 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 call it a polished B Blast to where basically their the finish underneath here is is done to a finer grit, so you don't have you know any large striations there. So it's probably not as successful to uh, corrosion as a normal B Blast would, if a heavy B Blast where you're having small little craters in there. But it's very smooth to the touch. Uh, it does smudge a little bit, but it doesn't look that bad um, after use. At least I didn't notice any. Uh, but still not my favorite finish. Um, let's see. The forward choil. <clears throat> you can either call it a forward choil or a, a oversized, way oversized um, sharpening choil. I mean, they, they came very close. I wish they would have extended it just a little bit more so it could fit pretty much everybody's finger if you're going to do that um let's see also i mean this is just a very nitpick not hurting anything but i would have loved to see that lock cut out on the inside however their lock cut out looks you know looks nice and it's not sharp they, they knock all the corners down on it um and lastly the pocket clip in my opinion they did it here as well the pocket clip just looks like a complete afterthought. It kind of cheapens the knife, in my opinion. It just gives it a cheaper look. Even though it, it performs excellent, goes in and out of the pocket nicely. I didn't have any problems with this part sticking me in the hand whenever I was doing cutting. I just would much rather see one of their nice milled clips because they do a good job on their milled clips. They're, they're always going in and out of the pocket easily. I know they're just trying to save money here, but at least it's titanium. So there you go. So overall... I like the knife. I, I think I even like it more than the Fornix. <laughs> um, slicing capabilities, excellent. Uh, comfortable in hand. Excellent EDC knife. And, you know, it's limited. So there you go. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them down below. I hope everybody's having an absolute wonderful day. I will see y'all on the next one. Peace.